God, would you open with a prayer, please? Father in heaven, Lord, we want to thank you for another day of life. We want to thank you, Father, for this place. Would you set aside this and come out this morning and worship you, Lord, in the spirit of truth? Father, we thank you for this great country. We've been blessed to be born and raised in, Lord. Thank you for the freedom that we have, Lord, that we can come out this morning and worship you in the spirit of truth. How we ask this morning to remember those who are sick and afflicted and not able to be here this morning. We ask, Lord, that you touch and watch over them. We've gotten ready, Father. Lord, we ask this morning that you remember those in the nursing home and the hospital. Lord, we ask that you encourage your strength in them. Father, we ask that you comfort the families, Lord, that lost loved ones. We ask, Lord, that you be with them in the time of grief, Lord, in their sadness and sorrow, Lord. Father, we ask this morning that you remember the lost. Lord, we ask that you touch their hearts. Let them know, Lord, what they are to nature, that they must be saved with grace. Lord, let them help us to be wise, Lord, that they can look to, Lord, that we can be a help to them on this journey through life, Father. Help us to realize we're just filled with strangers here, Lord, as this journey is just going to be on for us. Yes. A short period of time, Lord, when we go to that place called heaven, those, Lord, that have that blood fly through their heart, Lord. We ask that you help us to be an instrument that you can use. This morning, Lord, that we can further the gospel in our short lives here on this earth. Father, we ask now that you go with us in the rest of the service. That's yes, Lord, you bless Brother Vlad as he brings the message to us from that day. Thank you, Lord. Help our minds to be free and clear this morning that we can just absorb everything that's brought our way through that precious little Father. Yes, Lord, that you go with us now. In Jesus' precious name, I pray and ask these things this morning. Family's food, 
enhancing toys. The day explodes in cheer, wear zone in championship and laughter. Our cups are filled to the brim. Then dusk and after the long day's crush, in that exhausted hush, before sleep, we know that once again we've made no room for him. Let me start with verse uh, 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin uh, shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto his wife, and they knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. We find here, uh, quite a revelation, the angel came down there, and in, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, he's really quoting this, verse 14, it says, and you shall call, be called Emmanuel. I like that word, Emmanuel. I like it just because it's easy for me to say. I mean, it just sounds nice. Don't it sound nice, Emmanuel? Amen. But you know, that's not why I like that word. I, I like it be, be, because of what it means. And the Bible tells us what it means. God with us. Amen. Well, I tell you, I like that. Yeah. But you know, I, I like that word not just because I, sounds, I like the way it sounds and I like it because I like the meaning, but I also like it because I have experienced God with us. Amen. You, can, you might know his name, but I tell you there's a difference than knowing a name than experience the name. I tell you, I like that, amen. I, I was hearing a song here, uh, uh, Sister Laura likes to listen to McCamey's. And there was a song I kind of touched me there. It says, it says, one thing I know. I don't know if that's the title of it. It says, one thing I know. And I tell you, it's one thing that's good to know. One thing I know, it goes, uh, God is for me. Amen. 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 You know what he came for? He came and he came for me. He came for you, praise the Lord. It says, one thing I know, God is for me. And one thing I know, His plan never fails. Amen. It's good to know that, isn't that? Yeah. Not only is God for me and His plan never fails, He is always with me. Amen. You know what that is? That's Emmanuel. Yeah. God is with us. And then the last thing it says in that song, one thing I know, He does all things well. Right. Amen, isn't that true? Amen. He didn't, he said, boy, he messed up there. No, it's not. Amen. But as I read this, he said, you'll, he'll be called Emmanuel. And then you also find there, he said, we well, need to name him Jesus. And so I thought, you know what? That word Emmanuel, you find it one time in the Old Testament. You'll find it one time in the New Testament. I don't hear it again. And when Jesus was born, they named him, that wasn't Emmanuel, they named him Jesus. And when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming there when he was baptizing, and he said, Behold! He didn't say, Behold, Emmanuel. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Amen. Now you know where that Lamb came from? God. Amen. And you know what? God is with us. Right. We find, uh, it's, as I was kind of dwelling on this little bit, I thought, Emmanuel, I don't, I haven't, I don't see anyone going, hey, there's Emmanuel. But it said to be called that, didn't it? Mm -hmm. We find in the book of Genesis, chapter 28, you'll find there's a place where Jacob, Jacob Jacob's going through a rough time of his life. We, he just got done deceiving his, his dad. His dad said, you need to find a bride somewhere else. You need to go away. He left home. 
His brother's not happy with him. His life, in a sense, was upside down. And you know, but you know, during that time, he, he laid down that night there and he, he had a dream. And you know, when I thought about Emmanuel, sometimes that Emmanuel comes in the form of a force. I'm glad for the force of God. Yeah. I'm glad for those times in my life. I tell you, he had, a, he had a disturbing dream that night. And he, when he woke up, he said, this is a dreadful place. He said, it's a fearful place. But you know what he said? This must be the house of God. He said, this is the gate to God right here. You know what he was saying? Emmanuel, God came down that night in that dream. God was here. I felt his presence. I'm glad to tell you what tonight. I'm so glad for the times of my life before I was saved. He came and he touched my heart. Yeah. Aren't you glad he came down to touch you and to speak to you? And maybe, maybe you were ornery and you said, I'm ignoring that. And not today, but praise God, there's a God that's with us today. Amen. And there's a force that spoke to him. You'll read down in Jacob a couple chapters later, and God gets a little rougher with him. And we find he's laying down again at night. And you know, in the middle of the night, the Bible says it, it, the angel of God came down. And you know what happened? God wrestled with him. Yeah, that's, right. that's a force. By the way, you can't beat God. That's right. And praise God that night. There was a time, I believe this is the night that Jacob, he knew about that force, and that night it got a little rougher, and he got a little there, and God touched the hollow of his thigh, amen, and you know what happened when he, when that, when that happened, is when Jacob said, I give up, I surrender, aren't you glad for the day in your life that God came down, the force of God came down, it was the Emmanuel, his presence was real, and you said, I give up. This life that I'm living, that sin that I'm in, I can't get rid of it. And praise God for that day and praise God for that night. There's a force and it's real. I'm going to tell you what I, my desire is. Emmanuel. Yeah. This morning, I'm confident he's in this place. Right. Emmanuel. He's with us. And sometimes it's a force that's dreadful. Before I was saved, it was a dreadful thing to get that force. To get knocked on my heart's door. I didn't want to hear that. But you know what I like to hear now. Amen. You find the book of Exodus chapter 3. You won't turn there, but it's another story. But what's interesting to me, let me jump back there to Jacob. You know what, Jacob, he's wrestling with it. Jacob's wrestling with God there, and he gives in. He says, I give up, praise God. But you know what he did? He asked, he asked God, he said, what is your name? He seemed to want to know who this was. And God replied back, why? He said, why should you need to know this? And you know, I thought about that. You don't need to know a name, but you need to know that was God. God's with us. You read a little later in the book of Exodus, chapter 3. Moses is going through the wilderness. He sees a bush burning. No big deal, but it's not burning up. No big deal, but he gets near to it and speaks to him. And he said, you know what? This is holy ground. Yeah. You know, when I thought about that, it's holy ground. God's with us. Yeah. Take your shoes off. It's holy ground. Yeah. And you know what he spoke to Moses? And he said, I want, this was a force. And he says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to follow me. I've got, I'd like to lead you somewhere. I'd like to lead my people. <laughs> Moses said, I don't know if I can do that. But God says, yes, you can. And you know what he said? He, he actually said, he said in the, uh, chapter 3, verse 12, he said, certainly, I like this what he said. He said, certainly, I will be with thee. He didn't say he's going to be alone. You know what he said? Emmanuel. Good. God's going to be with you. Yeah. And you know what? For 40 years, you know who was with him? God. But you know what Moses also said? Well, who should I say sent me? I need to know a name. Isn't that interesting? He didn't know a name. And God says, I am that I am. Amen. 
You know who He is? He's Emmanuel. I'm God right here. I'm God with you. We don't always have to know a name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. But we find there was a following. I'm glad yeah, that, that following of the Lord is a wonderful thing. Then I thought about you singing about that. The, there's uh, the shepherds. You know what? They had a faith. They had some excitement. We ought to be excited. Did you know you went to the empty tomb? It's empty. Amen. Did you know that he lives? Yeah. Thank we shared a Wednesday night about the big long time, 400 years of, uh, of nothingness. But you know what they had? They had the scripture. That's right. But that's what they were counting on. They didn't have no open vision. They didn't have no prophet. They didn't have anything for 400 years. But they had the last two verses in the Bible. It said there's a messenger like Elijah that's going to come. And praise God in the middle. Then all of a sudden they heard of one that said who he was. He said, I'm that voice crying in the wilderness. Amen. You know what? They all of a sudden said, whoo, they all got excited. I shared, you know what? They had the scripture. You know what the scripture said? This, the, the Lord would be born in Bethlehem. Mm. I told him Wednesday, you know what I'd have done? I had me a stand. I'd have sold t shirts. <laughs> I sold souvenirs. This is the place that he's coming. You better camp out. You know it's a sad thing. You would have thought that I had multitudes of ends there. Because this is where he's coming. But yet, and even they knew the chief priest knew where it was supposed to be. But there was no excitement. We ought to be excited about our Lord. And the shepherds, you know what they heard? They knew. I, they didn't have to know much. All they had, they got a revelation from the angels and said, there's a baby in Bethlehem. Amen. So you know what? I'm just like Sister Laura. They said, let's just drop everything. The sheep will be all right. We're heading to Bethlehem. And when they got to Bethlehem, they got looking for a baby. They went looking in the barns there. And they saw a baby. And you know what? I don't believe that baby had a big glow on him. I don't believe it had a special birthmark on him. There was nothing on there that said, Well, this is the Son of God. There was nothing that said that. But you know what they had? They had faith. Yeah, amen. And they got excited because they believed what the angel said. And they got excited, and when they left that place, amen, they shouted it from the mountaintop. They got excited, and they said, God is with us. Amen. Emmanuel. Amen. Yeah. They said he'd be called Emmanuel. And the shepherds were the first ones to do it. God's with us. He's over there. Let's get excited, amen. He came down for you and I. Amen. Praise God. Then we find maybe close to two years later, the wise men came. They come over there and they sing a young child. Again, boy, there's not a radiance glow. But you know what? They believed it was the Son of God. Yeah. You know what they believed? That's God there. Yeah, man. And you know what? Praise God, they took off. Next thing, they're going back. They, these wise men, I don't know, but I don't believe they could contain it. They, everyone they saw back in Bethlehem there, you'll find, you know what? God is come for us. There's hope. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We find here, I'm going to tell you the truth is, since the birth of Christ, he's been here. That's right. It's not so much calling him Emmanuel, it's what he is. Mm -hmm. God's with us. Amen. Even the name Jesus, you know, that's not just a name, that's salvation. Amen. It means salvation, it means Savior. Yes, praise the Lord. So when I'm saying Jesus, I'm just not calling a name. I'm saying that's my salvation. Amen. Amen? Yeah. And by the way, he's with us. I tell you what, I, th I thought about this message here. I tell you, I know what we need. We need some encouragement. Yeah. And the greatest encouragement for you and I to know is Emmanuel. God is with us. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
You know what? We'll say, Brother Brad, have you seen a big light? Have you had a big vision? No, I didn't need one. God said he came. Yeah. Yeah. His book says he came. Right. I believe it by faith. The Bible said, Jesus said, I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you. He said when he ascended up, he said, I'm sending my comforter, the Holy Spirit, and he'll be with us. And praise God this morning, he's here, and we can say, Emmanuel. Well, the Lord. Amen. Don't know why. He's not like most folks say, well, I'll show up, but they don't. When God says he shows up, he shows up, and he stays. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. I think of throughout the Bible, amen, you can find where God showed up. You'll find in Genesis 26, verse 1 to 3, you'll find Isaac went to Egypt. And you know what? He really shouldn't have took off over there. God came down, and you know what he said to him? He said, uh, he said, I'll, he said, he said, he said, you need to go to the land I promised you. And he says, if you go to the land, I promise you, you know, he says, I will be with thee. Mm. He said, Emmanuel. Boy, I like that, amen. I'm going to tell you what, as I thought, thought about that, a lot of times, you know, we like to kind of use a big thing, and, I, and, and in a sense, God is always with us. Isn't that true? Yeah. But he didn't want us to go to Egypt. <coughs> he didn't lead you to Egypt. You find uh, it, it, some folks this morning that say, I think today I need, I got to spend my day, I'm not going to church, I'm going to Walmart. <laughs> well, you know, God's at Walmart too. That's right. <laughs> amen. <laughs> no, no, don't you use that, amen. You follow him, he'd, follow, he, he, he'd lead you to a church someplace. Yeah. Amen? Amen. We want God to bless us, and we, but we just want to do everything we want, amen. And but praise God, I'm glad to tell you what, there's an Emmanuel. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We find in, in time of famine there, sometimes we, we think we're, we're worried, we think we can't handle it. I have a God that can handle it. Yeah. You know what? He's here. Man. He, he's here for you. I like it sometimes I think of famine, I think about finances. Boy, I tell you what, finances can be a worry. You find in the Bible, it's in, I think in, well, I didn't put where it's at, but you know the story, amen? Peter, I tell you, he got, he got one of those flips in the paper, got it in the mail, and you know what it says? Taxes are due. Mm. I don't like that. I don't like taxes amen. due things. Do you? Amen. And Peter looking at that, and he's looking at the situation, he's looking there and says, well, I don't know, I, I don't have enough. What are we going to do? You know what? I got good news for you. Emmanuel. Yeah. God's with us. He's for us. Amen. And uh, he talks to Peter. And he said, Peter, go get your fishing rod. Get that, I don't know, Zebco 606 or whatever it is. I don't know. Go get that, get that fishing pole over there and just kind of put a hook on it. Do I need to put some bait on it? No, just kind of cast it out of the ocean. Can you visualize that and think what Peter's saying? Okay, Jesus. All right. Praise God, Peter did it. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes all we got to do is just cast. We need to do our part, and you know what? God will do his part, and he right. threw it out there, and if I threw it out there, and he goes, oh, wow, what's that? It must be a snag. No. <laughs> hey, man, he reeled that fish in. I don't know how big a fish it is, but you know what Peter did? He looked at that fish, and he thought to himself, well, we could probably sell this. That ain't going to be enough. Jesus says, look in his mouth. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I tell you what, he looked in his mouth, and you know what was in there? There was money. Amen. There was enough money for his taxes. Yeah. You know what he thought to himself? God's with us. Yeah. Woo! Glory! Amen. Boy, I wish there was money in fish, I'd be fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, God can do it, can't he? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. You'll find in finances, you can say, God is with us, Emmanuel, thank you, Jesus. I think about David, I tell you, he had a battle of his life. The world laughed at him. They said, you ain't going to get, you ain't going to give any success. 
You better put some armor on. You're going to get beat up. You're going to get squashed. That Goliath is going to get you. Amen. But I like it. I just like reading it. I read it a lot. Amen. I like to use it in an illustration a lot. You find here's what David said. You know what David believed? God with us. Yeah. We got a whole battle of folks. They're scared to death. They didn't believe Emmanuel. But David, the one thing he had was Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. And in the fight of this life, here's what he said. He said, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled, this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. You know what he believed? There was a God. There was an Emmanuel. He just didn't leave him on his own. He said, well, now you're, you're, you're by yourself. You're going to have to take care of this battle. You need to practice. You need to do all this. No, he believed in a God that could help him through those fires. Amen. And I don't know what kind of battle you might be going through this morning, but there is Emmanuel. Yeah. Amen. How many times have we said Emmanuel? We didn't even realize it. God's with us. Amen. I think about frustration. Sometimes we're frustrated. If anyone had reason to be frustrated, it was Joseph. He tried to do right. He had a vision from God. He tried to share with others. His brothers didn't like him. He tried to straighten them out. And boy, what did they do? They throw him in the pit. They sold him into slavery. And things started to look again. Well, I don't know why this is happening to me. And then he was he, he was taken out of that slavery into a place where he was treated pretty well. But then he was falsely accused. And he was put in prison for more than two years. And he maybe thought to himself, why me, God? You know what? Sometimes we don't realize that we look back. You get to the conclusion of the matter. God took him out of the prison and put him in a palace. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what he says? He was with me all the way. Yeah, Woo, aren't you glad to know he's with you all the way? You may not understand it. It may not be going how things you think ought to be going. But praise God, there's a God that's there for you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Daniel had reason to be afraid. Now, I don't know. I believe, believe he believed in a God that was there, but I don't know. You lower me in a bunch of hungry lions. I'm just going to have to get the sissiness in me, and I'm yeah, going to be scared. I, I'm just going to tell you. That's not a good way to go. No. But you know what? You know what Daniel learned that night? You know what he could have called out? Says, what's the king Darius comes and says, how you doing? You know, all you really needed to say was, Emmanuel. <laughs> God was with me. He yeah. shut the lion's mouth. Praise God. You can find it all in Scripture. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They wouldn't bow down. And if you don't bow down, you're going to be thrown in the fire furnace. And he says, they said, we're not going to bow down. And you know what they believe? There's a God that was with them. Yeah. Now, I tell you what, I don't think they really expected this. But when they got in that fire furnace, Praise God, they got looking around and they said, hey, hi Jesus. He's with us. Yeah. We don't even smell like smoke. I tell you, you don't tell me, I tell you what, how encouraging it is this morning to know that we have a God. It may be something you're going through, you're a little fearful of. There's a God that's with us. Yeah. And it started there, he came. He came to be with man as a baby. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Sometimes he's with me at the funeral. Mm. Now, a funeral's kind of one example, but you know, I'm glad to tell you what. When things aren't going good, and maybe you've had some sadness. I don't like it. This life is full of sadness. Yeah. If you're not sad right now, or you hang on, it's coming. But I'm going to tell you what I know what. I, hallelujah, praise God. And I like that name, Emmanuel. I like it because I know what it means. But I'm glad to tell you I like it because I've experienced Emmanuel. Amen. When you're down and out, when you're in that valley, when it seems like the grief has gotten a hold of you, there's one that holds the hand. Aren't you glad this morning? Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being with me. Thank you for promising that. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you said you'll never leave us, never forsake us. As I thought another area where I'm so glad for Emmanuel is, and I don't like this, but it's when I failed him. 
You ever failed? It's constant. And you know what? Sometimes I think when I fail, and sometimes you know when I say fail, I'm a sin. You know what I think? Sometimes in my mind, I think, well, God, he's really not watching me. He's kind of busy. You know, so it's okay. You know what? God sees all. He saw when you were supposed to do something and you didn't do it. He saw us when you did something you shouldn't have done. He was there. Yeah. And I know maybe you're all like a Pharisee this morning. So well, that was one time ago back, probably quite a few years ago. No. <laughs> Praise God, His mercy is new every morning. But you know what my God is? I know what I deserve. I like that story of the, the lost sheep, don't you? You know what this sheep did? He just went astray. He went astray and he got, did something he should have done. Next he finds himself out of the fence, out of the sheepfold there. And the shepherd went looking for him. Now I know if I was that shepherd and I know that sheep. And how many times have I been out after that one? This one is really a nuisance here. I'd probably just see that sheep. I'd probably give him a good swift in the seat. Get your tail back there. And I'd be running after him. I'd give him another kick. That's how we do it. You know what the shepherd does. Oh, he's with us. He reached down there when we've gone astray. He said, come here. I'll help me pick you up. Let me fit you on my shoulders. Let's go back together. Amen. Hallelujah. I praise God. He didn't say, get, get out of my presence. No, he carries us back. And I'm glad to tell you what, when I fail him, he's there. Yes, amen. He said, let's just try again. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Lastly, you know, I'm glad when I realize God's with us. It's, I'm glad. I can tell you what I've experienced His presence. Did anyone experience His presence? Emmanuel, thank you, Lord. You know what that was? That was God with us. We had to give Him the praise and the glory again. He was with us again, amen. He was with me again today, amen. Praise God, you've been through me that valley. You've been through me with, with all those different things in my life. He's been there. Yeah. Yeah. But I've got good news for you. He's also there in the future. Yeah. I know who holds tomorrow, by the way. Yeah. The world conditions, if you really look at and study it, and you look at the Bible, it's bleak. fact is, when you look in the mirror, it's bleak, folks. I'm going to get older. Anybody getting older? I know you're excited about that. Huh? You're getting weaker. You're, you can't do what you used to do. Some of you are thinking you need a nap right now. <laughs> Try to get your strength back, aren't you? Some, some of us are going to get poorer. And the fact is, we're going to die. And how, what an awful thing to die without Jesus. But Jesus came. He came to be with us and he came to be for us. Amen. Hebrews 13, 5, I've already shared this, for he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. I like Psalm 23, verse 5, says, Surely goodness and mercy. Amen. She'll follow me all the days of my life. That's now. Yes, yeah. I can promise that. I can count on that. Because he's with me. Then it also said, and then I shall dwell in the house Amen. of the Lord forever. Amen. You know what that is? Emmanuel. Yeah. I'm going to be with him. You know what? I don't know what anyone's going through, but I've got good news for you. There's an Emmanuel. There's a Jesus. There's a salvation. He's with us this morning. He's our help. He's our strength. He's our comfort. And whatever need we have, I'm going to tell you what this. He can take care of it. Amen. That's right.
God's with us. Yes. Amen. Let's all stand. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the promise. Said you would be called this. And Lord, I've never really said Emmanuel a whole lot in my life. There's times in my life. I said, boy, God had to be with us. It had to be God that touched me. It had to be God that intervened. And Lord, how true it is. Emmanuel, you are with us. I thank you, Lord. I don't understand why you put up with us. But Lord, you promise you're still here for us. Lord, every morning uh, we can go to you. We can count on you every hour. Father, thank you. Lord, whatever need we might have this morning, I pray we might give it to you. Let's not hang on to it. Let's surrender and say, here you go. That force has been talking to my heart. That, that force has been telling me uh, what I need, and what I need is Jesus. Have your way, Lord, this morning. We just rejoice in Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I've got good news for you. Jesus came. And you know what? He's still here. He came for you. He knows your need. He knows that trouble. He knows that worry. And guess what? He came. He came for you. He's here for you. Give it to Jesus. Let Him take care of it. Put it in His hands. Don't worry about tomorrow. It's in His hands. He'll take care of it. He's with us. Oh, where is He this morning in your life? Where is He? Is He where He needs to be on the throne? Is He on that place of authority as Lord? Is that where He's at this morning?